Hi, this is the Social Jello with Angelo show. My name's Angelo. I'm a social scientist, surfer, martial artist, and a whole lot of other things. Coming to you live from Kasai City, Japan, the Social Jello with Angelo show. What's up? And welcome to the Coach, Coach, Couch of Social Jello with Angelo podcast. <laughs> I'm here with Weston, Simonis, and Timothy Bruce. Um, and we're talking about lineages, and we're all sitting on the on the uh, social jello couch, if you will. <laughs> a little, it's a little tight in here, so if you don't mind, you know. <laughs> yeah. Today's topic is about lineages. Um, are they important? Why are they important? Why are they not important? As you know, with the way I run my show, it, it's uh, it's a free country in my show anyway. I don't know. Well, I'm in Japan. It's the internet's pretty the my my version of my internet's pretty much freedom of speech, so you can say what the fuck you want. Um, did I say that within the last first 10 seconds? I don't know. Let me check my time here. Oh shit, I hope I did. Because if I start saying the F word within the first 10 seconds, YouTube won't give me my 10 cents. Either way, um here's the deal. People put a lot people, and when I say people, martial artists, very specifically. Martial artists put a lot of investment into lineage. What is lineage? If, you, if you're just a casual, casual person who jumped into the show, lineage is who did who learned who from who. So if you do Gracie Jiu-Jitsu, did you learn Jiu-Jitsu from which Gracie? Here's another. Okay, whoa, we already opened a can of worms. You do Gracie Jiu-Jitsu, you might have learned from the Carlos Gracie Jr. lineage, which is the Gracie Baja lineage. You might be learning from the Gracie Academy, which is the, I think the Hoyer, Hoyer lineage, if I got that name right. So this is, to me, it's a really nerd, nerdy, geeky thing that when you get into martial arts at first, you can give a shit about. Most people walk in, most people, and, I'm not, and if you're not one of those most people, then okay. Then you're one of the geeks that comes in right off the bat. It's like, well, I did my research, and uh, yeah, I noticed that your school has a branch that goes to, you know, Carlos Gracie Jr. And I really want to be under a uh, school that's under through the IBJJF, and I like those rules because I did all my research. And for me, it's like it's just a fucking nerd. I didn't get into martial arts that way. I got into martial arts to fight and to defend myself. I grew up in the hood. I can give a fuck who your grandmaster, professor, who that was. I, I, the reason I got into Kaja Kembo was because I personally liked my instructor who was living. He's my neighbor. So it was very easily relatable to me to see someone living in the same dangerous neighborhood I was living in to tell me that they can teach me how to defend myself because they were in the same neighborhood defending themselves. It was just really easy. And I can give a fuck who he learned it from. I'll tell you that right off the bat. And my instructor knows that. Later, I got to know his instructor and his instructor's instructor. And they were cool people. Hey, he was cool people. They were cool people. But it wasn't the other way around. It wasn't It wasn't like I did a bunch of research about who the top was and figured, oh, the guy down here must be cool because the guy up here was cool. It was, it, was, it was the reverse order. The guy I met was cool, and then it turns out everybody else was cool too. So that's the problem. Now, I'm going to grab this, and we'll start off with why do you think lineage is or isn't important? And we'll start with Weston. Why lineage is important is, well, you've kind of already stated it, you know, it lines, lines you up with who you got your, say, black belt with. I mean, at the beginning, you're really not going to care about lineage because you're just learning technique. You're learning how to defend yourself. You're learning how to do a bunch of different stuff. And your focus is on building that toolbox to be able to get to and use those techniques. Well, once you start getting into the black belt range is when that politics kind of comes out. So, I mean, when you get your, your show on in some kind of martial art, there's going to be a pecking order between each rank. Um, some people really live in that cult world with that rank. And to me, that's where it doesn't matter, that cult rank area you know that's where it's like it's coming into a place where it's just really something that is not really worth going into i mean after your third degree black belt does it really matter if you get another belt no because you for you can already hand out a black belt but then again what if you get a black belt that wants to hand out 
a black belt, well, that means, therefore, you're going to have to go to fourth degree so you can promote him to third degree. So um, as the lineage part, that's going to, that's where it's going to be matter when you be, you're getting your black belt. But, um, and, and nowadays a lot of associations help out with, with that stuff too. I mean, there's schools that are, that are first degree and second degree black belts running schools and the association is coming in and promoting people to these different martial arts. So, the, the, I mean, in that way, it takes longer for someone to get a black belt, but then again, that's your lineage. You're in that association. Say, my lineage for Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is from the Helio line, comes down from Helio and Hicks into Pedro Sauer to Team Rhino. And then it's me. Uh, I was at, I was with uh, Keith Owen for quite a long time and then he passed away two years ago. And now he, I'm with Professor Todd Richards, which is um, his. Um, He's my black belt. I'm underneath, and Todd learned from Professor Keith, o Keith Owen. Now, in my Kaji Kemo lineage, it's a little different, you know. So, um, just the thing about what it doesn't matter is it's when people start putting emphasis on pe other people's ranks, and they're not even not even involved with them. I'd say the best lineage that matters is your own freaking school, dude your school's lineage, who you hand out rank to, that's what matters. Um, what doesn't matter is paying attention to someone else's uh, lineage because, well, you're not them. And you should be focusing on what is more important, your own school. Tim, same question. Do you think lineage matters? It doesn't matter and why? I don't think it really does matter because the more research we do, the more we find out that everything that came above us is usually misled or misremembered or miscreated or however you want to look at that. And I'm on the same boat with you guys, you know, did my instructor teach me well and that's what really matters to me. And do I teach my students well? And, you know, cause that's all that really matters at the end of the day, like you said, no one else outside of martial arts and probably the sub community of martial arts that you're in cares. No one cares. We don't wear our third degree black belts to the grocery store. At least you, we you don't. <laughs> hey, if you do, that, that must be a <laughs> but, you know, and me personally, at the moment, if someone starts listing names, I, I let my eyes glaze over. I don't care because even if you're from that lineage, do you fight like them? Do you move like them? Do you train like them? You're not them either way. So none of those things really matter to me because I treat every person as an individual who's in front of me. I've met plenty of people that were way better martial artists at white, blue, yellow that than any black belts that come across that that have a list of names attached to them. You aren't the names. And I think all lineages is a way of people to feel connected to bigger people or for lesser physically proven martial artists to connect themselves to more proven people. So... And then I'm just gonna make it myself so I don't see so scrunched. All right, so so um yeah, uh, and and here's the thing, like, and, well we're well, we're throwing out lineages, right? And I, I, look, I literally had to look up my Brazilian jiu-jitsu lineage. I have to do this every time because the only time this comes up is when some other jiu-jitsu guy from another Brazilian jiu-jitsu is weird. I have a lot of guys that come from other schools. For my Kaji Kimbo, I usually have a guy who's never learned martial arts in their life, and then I have to. They come in, they see the tree, and maybe after, I don't know, some people off the bat, they see the tree and they're like, what's that? And they're like, oh, that's the that's the family tree. That's that's the lineages of everything that's come from. Are you on there? Yeah, I'm on there. Here, here you want to see? I'm like a thousand names down. <laughs> Here's my footnote. And at the very bottom over here, <laughs> right? So like, and they're like, oh, wow. And that's the end of that. And then Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu guys will come in and ask you that right off the bat. Um, or, or I don't know you. I say me. They'll ask me right off the bat. So what's your, what's the lineage of your Brazilian Jiu Jitsu? Because like, they're really they're really worried about someone who's again. So here's 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 a, here's a testament to lineage. But, and this goes to Weston's point. In Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, they're really worried that you might be a fraud. That's really what it is. They're afraid that you might be a guy who doesn't know any Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, who's saying they're teaching Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, and you're actually teaching judo or something else that would not work. 
and then we're going to get into some into the weeds here with you tim and your and your tournament in a bit but um i, I looked up my my lineage right my my lineage goes um my instructor uh in hawaii uh kainoli he's under joe marrera and he's also under his his lineage gets all over the place too but his highest rank comes from joe marrera and that, that joe marrera goes to francisco masur goes to helio gracie goes to carlos gracie goes to mitsuyu maeda that's the that's the lineage but again to your point uh tim i think you were saying that well what's that mean for me in practice well i just told you my instructors in hawaii this means very little physically for me in practice the person on those mats that's me the person teaching those students physically that's me now they get tested and they get, it gets it gets sent to a review board. This is where lineage and associations matter. Maybe we're maybe breaking away from lineage. We're going more into associations because now we're talking about quality checking. Since I'm only a brown belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, I'm not a black belt. So I test my students. I have to send footage of my students either competing or being pressure tested by a higher ranking student so that they can rank. I can't rank them. And then it gets approved by an, another association. That's all on them. Now I can give my opinion. I can I can do a recommendation. Be like, hey, I think this person's ready to test, right? I think they're pretty good. I've I've physically felt them, and I'm kind of like their physical representation rep representative for that. But at the end of the day, it's me on the mats. So right now, I have a national champ who's showing up from another school, and his question was the same thing. He's a, he's a black belt, and he's a Japanese national champion. And his first question was, well, what's your lineage? That was the first question he asked as he walked in, and he said he saw my certificates. Like, what's your lineage? And again, it's just to make sure for him. Is this guy really a jiu-jitsu guy? And then from there, then we roll. So it's like a two-step qualifications test. Like, are you really a brown belt? Okay, let's roll. Okay, yeah, no, you're really a brown belt. Maybe I've had some people roll me. Maybe you should be other. I don't know. They have opinions about maybe be being higher. I don't know. That's all on you. Now, let's go into the weeds. Tim recently competed in a, in a Brazilian jiu-jitsu competition, and he teaches grappling. But this is where lineage in Brazilian jiu-jitsu really starts falling apart. I did, I did Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu under a Gracie lineage school for eight years, and I did another twenty-five to thirty-five, another ten years, it, uh, not under any lineage, under a guy that I have no idea where he learned his shit. I know he learned it in Kyoto somewhere. He went to an MMA school and he dropped out of the MMA school because it was too intense. It was like a top team out here. And he couldn't keep up with the top team because he wasn't trying to become a competitive MMA guy. He dropped out and started just training on his own at a, at a, at a sports club, at a martial arts club. And I met up with this guy and me and him would roll and he fucked me up every time. And that's how I did 10 years of my grappling. So 10 years of my grappling experience comes from this guy who nobody knows in America, but in Japan, everybody knows him. Right. But, but lineage doesn't matter. That guy doesn't even know who, if I asked him who, who taught you that stuff, he's like, Oh no, I guess this guy did. And who taught him that? So, but, but he, but he, he won the championship. That works. He put on, he went into an open tournament. They have open tournaments out here where any rank can join. And he competed against other black belts, other coaches and took the tournament. Right. Tim did something similar recently. He's a white belt in quote unquote Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. And he was asking, well, what the hell do I do? They're asking about lineage and, and rank. And I, I just want to compete. And I said, well, if, if, if you feel, he's, I feel it's not, you were telling me, you felt, well, go ahead tell him. I don't have to say this, it, you're here. <laughs> it felt completely unfair to have about 15 years of grappling experience. And their rules made it where I had to compete as a white belt because I haven't been officially ranked in jiu-jitsu because I've never trained Brazilian jiu-jitsu. I've done catch wrestling, I've done judo, and then I have a lot of grappling that's within the hybrid style that I've trained. And, but I spend, you know, three, four nights a week on the mats for the last 15 years. And yet they still wanted me to compete as a white belt because I didn't have rank in any kind of BJJ. So when I went out there is against guys that have only been training for six months to a year or two. And uh, it wasn't fun for them. You know, it wasn't fun for me either. Yeah. So. You, you, you were saying you felt like you, like you cheated. Well, come on now. And then <laughs> he's like, you know, you had fun. And this was the result, right? Yeah. You won. His his whole team won, right? A guy that they said was, uh, you know, they, they were, a guy that they said, oh, doesn't have rank, so you got to compete in white and blue, and none of your students really have rank. 
they ended up taking the whole tournament because they had a lot of grappling experience and okay, well, cool that your lineage and your stuff and you make the rules. He was just following the rules that were stated. Right. So I mean, we're not making right. this shit up. That's why I'm bringing this picture. Like if you want to say, Oh, he's making it up. I'm not making it up. There's a trophy. You know, he, he took it. It was a local tournament. He took the tournament. Um, so this kind of brings us to the other part of this conversation. Recently, there was this huge problem where someone started making a video about lineages and politics and high ranking people supposedly earning or not earning whatever the fuck they got. And what, what got me scratching my head is going back to what I said earlier in this conversation, this is something that people who get geeked out about get upset about, but people who just go on the mats and do the work don't care about. Um, what do you think about that guy? We're not going to mention his name out of respect for the rule that I don't like to badmouth people that aren't here. Right. If I want, if, if I, if I really wanted to say something, I'd have him on the show and I'd say what I have to say, but I always, I was taught um, in my education to attack the concept, not the person. So if I have, if I have a problem with something, I'll, 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 I'll look at the philosophy behind what, it is that I don't like. I'll talk about that. But attacking people as individuals does nothing as far as as far as debate and discussion. That's what I was taught. So that being said, what do you think about those people that do get really geeked out on lineages and political martial arts politics and start making YouTube videos? calling out other people and calling them names or saying they don't deserve what they got and whatever. And I'll pass this on over to Weston. Well, first off, I don't think that after reviewing the information that you've stated there, I don't think that he really knows the people he was talking about. And the just to point at a, a building that's painted brown, that's a brown building. Yeah, that brown building has two doors on that brown building. Well, just to point out a lineage tree doesn't mean you know anyone. Doesn't know you physically been around that person. How do you know that person? Have you trained with that person? Um, that person's in that position because he's been around for a while. <clears throat> just because a silver truck is silver doesn't mean it's any different than another truck that's silver. It's the, the brown, the title on it's going to make it different. If it's a Dodge, it's a Dodge. If it's a Toyota, it's a Toyota. But it's a silver truck, right? So my like point and view of that is just shut up. Shut up. Stop talking to people about other people's rank if you don't know them you don't under if you've never trained with them shut your mouth just just shut it because at, how do you know you can't judge a book by its cover you know the, the person you're talking about could be some badass that you have no idea who is and he just come beat your ass for opening it up so instead why not physically create a connection with these people instead of sitting here and try to bash them about the information that you have i'm not going to go out here and point at Tim, tim's tim's a catch wrestler he, he's a he shouldn't be in uh doing jujitsu in higher than a white belt because he's doing catch wrestling he doesn't have bjj go to a grappling match that's that has open rules and stuff like that i mean there's there's plenty of them out there that will let you grapple at, at a higher level. Mm -hmm. I mean, why not? But yeah, my opinion is shut up, train, show us your technique and, and, and stop talking crap about people unless you can actually back your shit up about someone because Everyone has an asshole. <laughs> it's truth. 
Everyone has an asshole. And your excuses of making up shit is just dumb. Everyone has an asshole, but you don't have to be one. <laughs> I think that's the I think that's the full saying, right? Yep. All right, Tim. So I'm a martial arts geek, just like you guys are. I love learning about like the Matosi fairy tales and the Chow fairy tales and the Black Belt Society fairy tales. And then all the guys in the 70s, 80s who used to beat each other's brains out, come up to class the next day, their fairy tales and all the way up to my coach's fairy tales and him getting into these wild brawls. And I'm going to have fairy tales too, I'm sure one day. <laughs> so I actually enjoy the geekiness of the fairy tales that we all have because of our lineage, you know, the history. But if you have to use lineage to put yourself on a pedestal or use lineage to kick people down pedestals just for political or self-feeling or self-negativity, then that is a horrible way of looking at martial arts. Okay. We all will yeah. say what you can do on the mats matters first, yet we allow people to go out there and spit this belt, this belt, this person, this person, this person. And the, I think the best solution is just show us your training videos. Every time someone wants to talk lineage, before you can, show us a training video. Show us you performing something epically. Even if it's an artistic thing, who cares? Show us you doing it well. If it's a combat thing, show us doing it well. And then at that point, sure, say what you want to say about someone else's. But have, have receipts. That guy is not that or this. Where's your receipts? Why aren't you talking to the other guy about this? Why is the other guy a part of the conversation? You know, whatever's going on between anyone politically, that really shouldn't matter anyway, because how clean is your dojo? How can you talk about the dirt at someone else's dojo? How clean is your dojo? Is, is your gym spotless? Is every choice you've ever made in your martial arts career spotless? Otherwise, why are you throwing shade? And can you train? Go back to training. And like I said, the, the whole idea of if you have something to say, then go ahead and say it to the person. If you if you have something you want to say to them, then then that's between you and them. If you want to do it in a public space, if you have a if you have a platform like I do, and you have a YouTube channel, then bring them on your show and have a conversation about it. Have a debate with them about it. Have a debate with them about it. If you really feel that strongly about it, if you really feel that strongly about it, like you feel that it's really important to question whatever rank they got and whatever rank they have and that really bothers you for some reason, which is, uh, these are all things that are really hard for me to wrap my head around because I really don't care. <laughs> for me personally, I really don't care what people higher ranking than me are doing. They're doing a job that I personally don't want to do. I'm not interested in doing. So I, I'm really of the school of thought that if I'm not willing to do a job, then I might have a few opinions about how things can be run, but as far as how they're doing the job, I'm really not sure I could do any better. So like, I, I really don't have much to say about it. Maybe that's me. I have a, I have a different assessment of my own personal skills, but like, I don't, that that's right. That's what I say. And I'll, I have strong opinions and we all know we have, we all have strong opinions. We've talked about that. Like as far as what happens, what, what should be focused on and, and that kind of stuff. We have opinions of what leadership should be doing, but at the end of the day, I'm not leadership and what leadership does like I can. So here's the deal. I can talk about what I don't like that leadership has done. I can say that that's something tangible. Like mm -hmm. if, if, if leadership in a martial art, like uh, let's go back to Gracie Jiu Jitsu. If leadership in a martial art decides to say they're not going to have any leg locks in IBJJF, well then, I can disagree with it all I want. Ah, that fucking sucks. I think they should have them, right? Or the opposite. Right now, they recently lead leadership in IBJJF, which I'm, speci I'm specifically talking about Carlos Gracie Jr., who's the head of the IBJJF and also the head of Gracie Baja. Like, and I'm not talking badly about him. I can talk about the actions he's made, right? They were, yeah. and, and did he make them? Here's the other problem. Did he really make these? Come on. There's a committee. It's not just him. It's a whole group of people who got together and evaluated evaluated what's happening at the tournaments, injury rates, all that stuff. They have data I don't have access to. And for the longest, they felt that leg locks were just too dangerous. And then recently they said, okay, you know, why not? After looking at new data from other associations that are allowing leg locks, 
it seems like you know it's just as dangerous as anything else so we're gonna we're gonna allow the straight ankle lock now from all the way up into brown belt i think it is brown right i think it's around brown or so brown or purple and then after that we're opening up leg locks to to, to higher ranks and they always had leg locks for higher ranks anyway but again i can be critical of that decision i can have my own opinion about it but at the end of the day i have to look at how does that trickle down to what i do on the mats well Whenever I'm teaching a leg lock to a student, I have to tell them, hey, uh, the reason we're not going to focus on heel hooks today is because you're going to have a competition in two weeks. And if I just if I keep teaching you how to transition into a heel hook and I don't teach you how to go into a straight ankle lock, you're going to get disqualified. And none of us is going to be happy about that. Yeah, you're a badass. Yeah, it's more street effective, street effective. Yeah, it's more practically effective. Right. And this is where lineage and what on the mat connects. And that I have an opinion about. But when there is a when there is no connection between lineage and on the mat, that's where I just stop caring. And going to Kajikambo, most of the stuff that happens up here has nothing to do with happening down here. Zero. Because we're very free to do whatever we want. So like, and that's the our art. So like, even, even when, let, let's just take back into Kajikambo, because I love Kajikambo. We're going to wrap this up in two minutes, because I know Wes has got to go. I got to go. Everyone's got to go. Um, the top of Kajikambo, if you look at the KSDI tournament, it's point sparring. As of right now, point sparring, continuous, sometimes kickboxing, sometimes no kickboxing, depending if they can get the commission involved. Um, it's uh, jujitsu, no gi. I think they might be bringing in gi, but last I checked, it was no gi jujitsu, and I saw them competing last time in their last tournament. And uh, that's it. There's no MMA as of right now. And I'm not going to, no spoilers. There's no MMA as of right now. So, like, that being said, I could be critical and be like, oh, there should be an MMA division in Kaji Kembo because our, our style, blah, 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 I could do that. But I'm not leadership and I have no say or do and whatever is happening up there anyway. And then if I have my students who are going to compete at that tournament, which they can't because I'm in Japan and it's hella expensive, hella expensive. For me to go from here to Japan, it's like 10 grand with students. I'm not gonna, they, no one can, no, none of our guys can afford that. So like, again, that's the only connection. So that's the only time there's a connection between higher up and what's happening on the map. Closing thoughts, starting with Weston. Uh, man, I think that um, lineage has it's got its, its place, but instead of putting out content for people who want to bash people, they should, they should put out something about what it – is the more concerned of how it develops the art versus who's what rank because at the end of the day it's just we're all family we're all friends we're all here to represent each other so if you're too worried about someone else's rank then you're not really focusing on your own school you're not really focusing on the techniques that are involved in the art that you're in it could be kachikimbo it could be it could be coding condons on ru jiu-jitsu it could be Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, it could be ta Taekwondo, it could be cop, you know, whatever, whatever it is, focus on the techniques, the development of that martial art, focus on your school, and like you were talking about earlier, that knee bar, you know, if you can't teach it before this tournament, don't teach it, but when there's no tournament, by God, teach that teach that knee bar teach that heel hook teach whatever <laughs> but just shut your mouth when it comes to other people that's more important Tim? your students matter more than your master that's about all i got to say about that yep yep all right well what do you all think you sat here for 30 minutes and watched us talk about lineages and what happens on the higher ups and what happens on the mats. Jump into the comments. What do you think? Does lineage matter? Does it not matter? What, why, and how does that work for you? And then uh, what does that look like for you on the mats? Post it there and I'll catch you all next time.